We all know we love cars, but everyone within the fandom has slightly different interests. You know, maybe you don't collect the diecast. Maybe you're just a big fan of the movies and like to find all the little Easter eggs and maybe you like to draw the characters. Maybe you're a bigger fan of the Planes movies than the Cars movies. If you do collect the diecast, perhaps you're big into the Piston Cup racers or, you know, some people are into the Radiator Springs Townies. Everyone has their own niche and that is what makes the hobby so much fun, especially interacting with other fans and collectors because each and every one of us brings something unique to the table to discuss and, you know, that's just why I love being here. And my favorite part of collecting these Disney cars is... You guys probably know by now, it's the unreleased and prototype stuff, the kind of harder to get stuff, but that's just what makes it so much more fun to me because there's an element of chase, you know, hunger. I'm always wanting more, even though I really, I'm really grateful for what I have, but it's just part of collecting that you always want that next holy grail piece. And yeah, guys, you guys know I've done a lot of videos on my channel on the canceled cars. You have your Ento Crew Chief, you have your Mood Springs Pity, all that good stuff and I'll leave some links to that in the description below but it is now time to shift the focus a little bit or at least give some attention to prototypes so these are the unfinished cars you know Technically, all canceled cars are prototypes because they never were officially released. They were samples. They were just finished samples. These are going to be unfinished samples, and I just love that. I love getting something that I'm not supposed to have. It's like that little rebel inside of me. It's like these were never publicly released. And so in this series, of course, welcome, by the way, to Prototype prestige episode one today we're going to take a look at ben dordan the bumper save crew chief i have a prototype of him here and his official thailand release and we'll also take a look at how he compares to the chinese version of ben dordan and even a little surprise later as well but in this series i will be telling you guys how i get each and every one of my prototypes i will tell you exactly how i got the prototype in the video and i will you know give you my best you know, tips and tricks, driving up the market price of prototypes even more. Wow. What am I doing? <laughs> am I trying to make it harder on myself? But no, seriously, guys, I just want to be able to share these with you because I have a ton of them. Very happy about that. Very grateful. And instead of them just sitting on my shelves all day long, it's probably best that I do something with them. You know, I spend, you know, a pretty penny on these and it's probably a good idea that I enjoy them instead of, you know, like I said, chasing more. So that is what the series is going to do. Hopefully it helps you guys, you know, kind of find your niche, maybe discover some things that you, know, you like, some new things, figure out how to get some prototypes and Let's just get right into it. Episode one, there are going to be a lot of these episodes because like I said, I do have quite a few prototypes. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but there are going to be you know, a sizable amount of episodes and I cannot wait. You know, There are an infinite amount of prototypes out there because they've made probably at least like 100 samples, I'd say, of every single release they've done. Now, obviously, only a small fraction of those samples actually leak out. And so that is where we're going to start today. How do these prototypes leak out and how do you get them, right? I mean, it's unreleased stuff. It's not supposed to be out. Like how on earth are people getting these? Well, first off, it's all secondhand, right? It comes from eBay. Now, how are the eBay sellers getting these prototypes? Well, in my personal opinion, you live in China, you live in Thailand, you live in Vietnam, there are marketplaces there, whether it be Lazada, for example, that is like a Thailand selling platform like eBay. There are even more than that. There's Taobao, that's a Chinese one. There are more than that that we don't know of. I know of some of them, but there are a lot of them that only sell within their respective countries. Platforms where you can only buy and sell if you live in Thailand, Vietnam, China. That is just like Mercari in the United States. Mercari is only available to people who live in the United States. Okay, so these eBay sellers probably go on those sites and factory workers who have access to these prototypes because they are just rejected, right? Like what does Mattel need? They just throw these things out. They're not going to collect them themselves. They're not going to put them in a museum. Maybe they take some of them, ship them to the executives in the United States or whatever to the people who approve this stuff and the rest of them are thrown out. 
Now, the smart factory workers are like, oh, I can make a good amount of money by picking up the scraps, right? And so they put them maybe on these selling platforms and the eBay sellers get them. I don't think that most of these eBay sellers have actual direct access to the factories. I don't think that any of the eBay sellers are really factory workers themselves. And I know this for a fact about the person I got Ben Dordan here from. She was an eBay seller. She still is up there. I'm not going to endorse her or anything like that though, but she listed a ton of prototypes at once, right? A ton, including Ben Dordan here. He was one of the first ones and I immediately snagged it, okay? You know, it was pretty expensive, but I love these things and you know, I work hard, so <laughs> I thought I earned it. But she then later took down all of her prototype listings because apparently Disney Pixar told her to. That's very, very strange. Very strange. I've never heard that before, right? And then she later told me via message that she gets them from another friend. So I'm assuming maybe this friend works at the factory or knows a cousin family member who works at a factory, right? Like it, there's family over there. It's all connected. Either way though, when you list like 50 prototypes at once on eBay, you know, you're bound to garner some attention. And so that's probably why Disney and Pixar, or rather Mattel, caught onto this and was like, you need to take that stuff off because you acquired it illegally. You know, probably the factory workers are not supposed to take, you know, they're not supposed to raccoon through the garbage and take out the, you know, rejected samples and then sell them on the black market, essentially. You know, that's basically what happens. That's the process of getting these. Now, for this one in particular, it was in late November. It was like right before Thanksgiving, right around that time. And I bought it. So all you have to do is search Disney Cars Prototype on eBay. That's all you do. You look at it constantly. I mean, I don't know why I'm telling you guys this. You know, it's I'm only garnering more competition for myself and driving the price up. But again, I just want to share this with you. And, you know, hopefully you guys, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't get too bad, too crazy. The market has already gone nuts over the last few years. Like, you know, several years ago, you would not have to pay this much for a prototype. But it has gotten pretty insane. And I feel like I have kind of contributed to that because I've you know, talked about them so much and blown them up to monstrous proportions. All right. And though I've rambled on for a lot of time already in this video, I can't believe I was able to talk for like seven and a half minutes non-scripted about prototypes. But I wanted to get that out of the way for episode one. That is the process. I won't explain that in every video. I will just explain how I got that specific prototype. So I'll always refer back to this part of this video where I really explain how these prototypes get out. Most of them are through eBay. And then sometimes if you know someone just specifically, you know, in China or whatever, and you're friends with them and they'll maybe be able to get you some, you know, if they have the right connections. All right. So, you know, eBay and then connections, right? That's, that's it. Like, it's not that hard. All right, so Ben Dordan here, he is decked out in this dark tealish green paint job with a beige slash tan base here. Now, if they have this specific color base, it means that they've been made in Thailand, even though it doesn't say anything on the base here. We'll run to some prototypes where it does say made in China or made in Thailand. And then some don't have anything at all, right? So this one doesn't have anything at all, except for this little tag right here that has the product code on it. That's CTKBXX, I think it is, along with, it looks like a date, May 14th of 2019. That is what I'm reading right there. So a lot of the prototypes do have like this little white note taped onto either the base or sometimes somewhere else. And that also is a, immediate indicator that it's a Thailand prototype. No Chinese prototypes have that. No Chinese prototypes have this tan base either. And of course, Ben Dordan was just made from Thailand in 2020. So that makes the most sense anyways. I think that says 05 up there. That seems pretty early for this to be made, but you know, they do start working on these pretty far in advance. Now, none of these prototypes are going to be in mint condition. And honestly, I like that. It gives it more character and makes it feel more legitimate to me. Like if it was a mint prototype, I would literally raise my eyebrows and be like, that's not real. Like if it's in perfect condition, I would be like, that's fabricated. So it's got a red plastic headset here, which looks great. I love the ones that are colorful. You know, as you guys will learn, my favorite prototypes are always going to be ones that have more color. His rims are just blacked out. And that is pretty much it. You know, most of this 
series will consist in the comparisons here, seeing, you know, maybe if they changed anything from the initial mold to the final product and, you know, just kind of having fun with it. So it doesn't look like they really changed much here. You have the mouth looking the same, the grill is looking the same. They tampoed on the decals for the headlights and bumper save. Headset is the same shape and size. They obviously painted the rims blue. You got the door handle there as well. Add the tail lights and the license plate. So he was made in N20A. So that's the 20th week of 2020 at the A factory. And then this says like, again, I think it says May 14th of 2019. Yeah, I'm pretty confident that is the date. So, wow, I can't believe they made this guy so far in advance. Almost makes me feel like it could have been actually a prototype for, you know, that Taco Mint Crew Chief that we saw a picture of one time. I'd have to look at the expression for that, but it's possible. You know, I do have a prototype of a canceled Thailand release that we'll get to in a future episode. But, you know, first of all, you know, we got we to gotta finish off here with Ben Dordan. Here is the Chinese version of Ben Dordan, but when this guy was released, he was just referred to as Bumper Save Crew Chief, and he looks a lot different. I know I reviewed Ben Dordan in the 12 Days of Christmas in 2020, but here you know, is another look. You can see that they minimized the size of the headset a ton, and I'm so glad they did because this just looks obnoxious. That looks obnoxious. It doesn't look good at all. This looks so much better, and even though the eyes maybe look a little grainy, I think that... The Thailand version actually is a better release overall. Not only is it now metal, even the cab or the, the cab and the bed, it's all metal. Before, this back portion was plastic, which kind of stinked. So, the Thailand version's heavier. You can see they barely put anything on the base back in 2010, back in the day. They all have that exhaust pipe hanging out down there. You could just see it better on the prototype because it's in that beige color. All right. This is one of my favorite ones because I haven't seen another one of it. Now, most prototypes, at least the ones that we'll be reviewing, there are a couple of. There's probably at least two of most of these that I'll be showing you guys. I mean, that's still extremely rare, but just know that a lot of these, you, know, you might think automatically like, oh, prototypes are one of a kind. I mean, technically, yeah, <laughs> they are one of a kind, but like they might have like a slightly different, like it'll be written differently. Obviously that is handwritten. So it's going to be technically one of a kind, but there might be another prototype just like this one. You guys know what I'm saying, right? But they're still very limited. That's what I'm trying to say. And I just wanted to quickly show you my Easy Idle Crew Chief. Now, this is a canceled car. This is a finished one, obviously, though. And I reviewed this a long time ago in my Team Easy Idle video. And so, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that for fun. He does have the big headset, although it's on the flip side of the bumper save one. So, in my opinion, he looks a little bit better. I also like his expression more. Yeah, he's got a cool mouth. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you guys like this series, Prototype Prestige. You know, it's been a long time in the making. Like, I've been buying prototypes, and it's like, dang, I really want to show you guys these. I want to do something with them. I don't want to just receive them, open the box, and put them in my carny case. I don't want them to just sit on a shelf you know, for the rest of their time. Like, I want to actually show these to the world and you know, make something out of them. And that's exactly what this is. Prototype prestige, you know, a little bit of a showcase, a little bit of, you know, informational so you guys can learn about prototypes and all that stuff. And yeah, just for fun, guys, I really just want to have fun with you guys this year. And it's one of the things that I've innovated for 2022 here on the channel. But yeah, guys, most of the episodes won't be this long. This is just the pilot. And I will see you guys soon for another video. Oh, and yeah, these will come out on Thursdays, I think. That is the day I decided I want these to come out on Thursdays. All right, guys. Bye now.